Hello, my name is Olivia Jimenez, and my group and I are presenting on sleep hygiene. Every time I spoke with fellow classmates, they would tell me that they only received two to three hours of sleep before each exam. Speaking with many of my colleagues and fellow group members, I've noticed that we've all had our fair share of sleepless nights. Even during my emergency medicine rotation, I noticed residents falling asleep at the workstation while finishing their notes, many stating that they only received about one to two hours of sleep that night. Lack of sleep can cause an altered mental status and could be harmful to the patient they are responsible for. These are just a few examples of poor sleep habits of both healthcare providers and students. So our problem statement. As students and healthcare providers, we sometimes sacrifice our own health in order to help others. And we've noticed that during our schooling and clinical rotations that many people are not receiving the proper sleep they need. Sleep deprivation is pervasive in the healthcare community. Lack of sleep, sleep negatively impacts health, cognitive abilities, and emotional well being. Lack of sleep also negatively impacts professional performance. So, our idea and target group our goal is to empower healthcare professionals and students to learn the importance of good sleep habits and promote self care by providing them with evidence based sleep hygiene information. According to the CDC, most Americans are chronic undersleepers, with only 64% of adults in California getting a sufficient amount of sleep in 2013. Our PubMed search found that healthcare providers were not immune to lack of sleep and on average got even less sleep than their counterparts. In addition, in their mid-course review, the Healthy People 2020 campaign found that not only did they not meet any sleep health targets, but three out of the four objectives didn't change or got worse. So we reached out to the healthcare community in SPA 3 and 4 to ask them for their thoughts and gain insight into their needs. We dropped into Platt College nursing classes, canvassed the USC Health Sciences campus, and called upon our personal contacts as well as our peers and faculty here at the PA program. In total, 138 surveys were filled out by a variety of students, residents, PAs, and physicians. 97% of them agreed that sleep deprivation is a problem in the healthcare community, with 82% reporting that they themselves slept less than the recommended seven hours of sleep a night. We asked, what is the most concerning effect of sleep deprivation on healthcare professionals and students? And this is what our participants came up with. A lot of them were concerned about the negative impacts on patient care, their ability to function well or perform well in their job or studies, and their emotional and physical well-being. Notably, their responses were consistent with the themes that we found in our literature review. In our needs assessment, difficult schedules, stress, home commitments, electronic use, and health concerns top the list of sleep barriers. Additionally, our participants expressed interest in sleep hygiene-related apps, simple sleep hygiene improvement tips, and effects of sleep deprivation on health. So we decided that we needed to tailor our intervention with these things in mind. To make an intervention that our community would actually use, we needed it to be easily implementable, low cost, accessible from anywhere, and engaging. These characteristics correlated with a clear preference for a video. Health literacy. We wanted to make sure that this was engaging for all healthcare professionals and students, as well as easily accessible by using YouTube videos to be used anywhere. We also wanted this to be visually pleasing and easy to follow so that this could be implemented into their daily lives. We used a smog method to make sure that it read at a sixth grade level, as well as more graphics so that it wasn't as text heavy. Cultural competency. We wanted to make sure that this reflected the diversity of healthcare professionals and students by encompassing all religious groups, social and social economic statuses, as well as any financial constraints by making this available to everyone. We also wanted this to be convenient to be used anywhere, as well as making sure that it was evidence-based medicine by using scholarly journals and other reputable sources. Advocacy. We wanted to advocate for the well-being of healthcare professionals and students, as well as the importance of sleep hygiene in terms of improving stress management. Also, we wanted to improve their mental health by decreasing burnout rates, as well as their physical health in hopes of decreasing obesity and other metabolic issues. And we also wanted to use this opportunity to promote the PA profession, as well as the importance of interdisciplinary involvement. 
As a group, we decided to develop an online intervention as this was a direct result of our needs assessment. We created an easy to follow website called Get Some Sleep. It's a play on using the Latin root term "som," which means sleep. First, we created four videos using PowerPoint and Screencastify to record our videos. The videos on average were between three to five minutes long, making it easy for the viewers to view all of them in a short amount of time. We also wrote down key factors and points for individuals who may not be auditory learners. After making the videos, we created our free website using Wix.com. So let's go through it. This is the homepage of our website. Um, over here, you'll find the questionnaire, which asks more specific questions about sleep concerns to the users and then prompts them to the specific videos they can watch. On the second page is the About Us page. We use this section to explain how we became involved in this project, as well as advocating a little bit more about our professions as PAs. On the third tab, you will find the videos with instructions on how to watch them, how to complete the pre and post test, and what sequential order they should be going in. The fourth tab is where you will see the pre and post test with hyperlinks, which will directly direct them to the Google Forms, which is what we use to create the pre and post tests. And then um, on the fifth tab, you'll see the tips page. This is where we included specific tips on various sleep hygiene related topics that the viewers can read more about. The last page is our addition, additional resources page. Uh, all of these resources are hyperlinked and these resources are various different types of apps, websites um, from USC and from other avenues that they can use. So throughout the website, uh, we made sure to create lots of hyperlinks for the pre and post test to make them easy as well as the videos to make them easily accessible. And we also tested the website before we launched it and we received positive feedback from users saying it was easy to navigate and it was accessible. We created a website so that for our future colleagues they can easily sustain this if they wish to continue the project. Majority of our participants, 67%, were students in the healthcare field, specifically physician assistant students, followed by other healthcare professionals. Our pre and post tests consisted of 10 questions. We had a total of 60 responses from our pre-tests and 57 responses from our post-tests. These are six out of the 10 questions where there was an increase in the correct answers from our pre-tests noted in blue to our post-tests noted in orange. In the remaining four questions, we noticed an overall improvement in participants' answers from the pre-tests to the post-tests. There was an improvement in recognition of how increasing the amount of sleep can improve stress, and also a significant increase in confidence in teaching someone else about proper sleep hygiene. Participants also showed a significant increase in willingness and likelihood in improving their sleep hygiene. We had a total of four objectives. After evaluating our pre and post test results, we concluded that objective A was met. Objective B was also met, objective C was not met, and objective D was partially met. As Melina mentioned, we were able to um, satisfy two of our objectives, objectives A and B uh, listed here. However, we were not able to satisfy objective C, which was a recognizing the association between sleep and obesity um, because between the pre-test and the post-test only 65 percent of the pre-test and 75 percent of the post-test respondents answered correctly um, and for objective d it was we answered uh, or it was fulfilled partially so in terms of our um, goals being met we felt that 50 percent of our objectives were met so um, and overall, we felt that there was an impact in our study. Um, and uh, so one thing that did stand out was the fact that in terms of, um, even though we didn't fulfill objective B, uh, one thing that did stand out was the fact that people were more confident um, between the pre-test and the post-test in teaching students about sleep hygiene. So initially 52% were either not confident, they were neutral, um, or they, uh, were somewhat confident on teaching students, and that increased all the way to 86% on the post-test with people being very confident, or at least somewhat confident to, te to teach others. 
And also after the intervention, a lot more students were able to answer the multiple choice questions correctly, um, which was able to help us in achieving our goal for objectives A and B. Um, so overall, we do feel like our intervention did have an effect because of what I just described. Um, and we feel that what might have affected the outcome um, was possibly the uh, percentage that uh, was calculated for the correct answers between the pre and post test um, might have slightly varied just because there was more students that completed the pretest and the post test. Um, we did send the link for the pretest and the post test and the website all together, and we had gave instructions to students, but we had no control over how they completed the those uh, pretests and post tests and in, and in what order. So some conclusions that could not be drawn was that we did not ask participants specifically how many hours of sleep they got at night um, and to see if maybe after the intervention it would improve or if they would want to try to improve it. And we did not ask specifically what areas or issues they were having with their sleep. We asked them to watch all the videos on the website. And on the website, we did have a questionnaire um, in order to narrow down what issues were bothering them but it was not a part of the pretest and post-test. Um, so an obstacle um, that we faced was not being able to have an in-school intervention once we noticed that there was more pretests and post-tests. Um, having an intervention in a time setting where people could complete, complete more post-tests would have helped. Um, and then also we didn't have a broad demographic because we couldn't go back to Keck School of Medicine uh, where we completed our initial survey uh, or needs assessment um, because of the COVID pandemic. And similarly, we could not provide physical incentives such as hand sanitizers or pens because we could not physically give these objects to students. So as we mentioned, um, a correlation that we feel that might be there in the, in the whole, um, in the study is the fact that participants greater understood the effect of proper sleep hygiene, it seems like from, from our intervention, uh, because they answered more multiple choice questions correctly about it. And um, they also gave them, it also gave them more confidence to teach others. So in terms of our expected results, we thought everyone could, would complete the pretest and the post test, but as I mentioned, that's not what happened. And unexpectedly, we still did get a lot of responses overall, considering the fact that we could not do a, any kind of in-person intervention. One of the stars for our sleep hygiene project was our needs assessment. We had healthcare students complete a needs assessment indicating whether they would participate in a sleep hygiene project. And they told us they would if it had depth, was brief, was free, and something they could interact with on a regular basis or whenever they chose to. So we designed a website that was both interactive and engaging. One of the other stars we found was theory versus practice, mind over matter. Whatever we want to call it, we all do it to some degree. Sometimes our mind knows what's best for us, but we can't carry that out in practice. For example, while we know from research and from our own experiences that sleep deprivation can have consequences, both physical and mental health, what surprised us in the project was that people reacted with surprise about the dire consequences of sleep deprivation. Some participants, myself included, have sometimes even been just a little proud of the ability to put off sleep, complete a project like this, finish a rotation, do an OSCE, that kind of thing. One of our most important stars was realizing how well our group banded together and found creative and unique ways to address this project. We were testing this project not to identify our weaknesses, but to identify our strengths. What a team. Our wishes, hopes, dreams, and sing along if you remember the song from the 70s, Wishing and Hoping and Dreaming. If we were to do the project again, we would want to include persons from the SPAs in both design, development, and implementation of the project. Another wish, it would be great if we could have the same persons who did the needs assessment also participate in the pretest, intervention, and post-test. And while we had many who did, it would be nice to have had more. We always want more. Our partners were critically important to the success of this project. We've listed some here, but we had some that weren't listed. We all know that networking is a critical feature of success, and we utilize networking with the health community as well as with friends, family, and neighbors. Connections led to more connections, and it's true, we're all only six degrees of separation from one another. 
This project is better because as we developed it, we made new connections and found new concepts to integrate into our project. Now our call to action. We want to challenge the 2021 Keck US CPA students to be inspired to continue our work and make it even better. Maybe to coordinate with entities like the USC Korshak Center for Learning and Creativity and Keck's Primary Care PA Program Orientation. Perhaps involve the PA community through advocacy groups such as AAPA and or CAPA. Before you leave our presentation today, we'd like to ask you to indulge in a necessity. We've all heard of BOGO. This one is Get One, Give One. We'd like you to go to our website and find one recommendation on sleep hygiene that resonates with you. Find one for yourself and one you can give to a family member, a friend, a classmate. Sleep well, help others do so too. We'll leave you with this one thought. Together, we're stronger. Thank you.